cameras were off. Show's over. I got screwed. And I was so mad. And there's Sean suddenly in my dress room. And he's swearing to God that he had nothing to do with it. Sean, you were in on that? My hands are clean. This one, I swear to God. He was a bad actor. But one of the two was in on it. Then I think Sean had to be in on it. You know, at that time, I, I had no idea. Well, now we know Sean was just putting on an act. It was like this hush in the dressing room. Everyone's kind of stunned. I remember Undertaker got so mad that he kicked over all those big steel barrels. He just slammed the door and he said something about it. He was going down to Vince's office to get a straight answer on why they did that to me. You know, Vince, you got to go over and talk to him, explain why you did what you did. You got to give him one. And by giving him one, but if he's going to he's gonna hit you, you got to take one. Brett came out of the shower and told Vince to get out of his dressing room. And then he said, he goes, he said, if you're still here when I get out, I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to punch you out. Brett finished the shower. I mean, he went back and <laughs> took his sweet ass time and finished the shower. And Vince stood right in the middle of the room waiting for him to finish. So I finish shower and I come out. And it's funny because I walk out of the shower, sucking my naked. And said something to me along the lines of this is the first time I ever had to lie to one of my talent, which is such a lie. I remember tying my shoes, and I remember when I got tying my last shoelace, I started to tie it like, oh, this is it. I'm going to punch out Vince McMahon. I can't believe I'm doing this. And we walk towards each other, end up tying up just like a pro wrestling match. And I remember just sinking down and kind of just turning my whole body and thinking 14 years coming up right between our arms and I hit Vince McMahon with the most beautiful Mike Tyson uppercut. I popped him literally off the, right off the ground. He went straight down, out cold. Everybody was stunned. No one could believe it. It was dead silent for a while and nobody said anything and then Brett said, get out of my dressing room. So I have to say that I remember Shawn Michaels, he was bawling his eyes up like a baby. And I remember thinking, I know you were in on it. And he knew it. He was like waiting for me to make my way over to him and finish him off. But I just tapped him on the shoulder and I said, Sean, thanks for the match. Or he couldn't believe that I thanked him for the match. And then he looked up at me and he just burst into tears. Really blubbering. I had never to that point heard of that much drama and backstage. Just bullshit. Sometimes I lost sleep. I should have done that thing. Brent, you're not going to understand this now. But Vince was trying to protect his business. It was never about not trusting you. He didn't trust Eric. I went to Vince's office and said, I need to talk to you. He said, okay. I said, um, he said, I got a meeting with everybody today. We'll take care of it. Set everybody down and said, what I did last night was my call. It's not Earl's fault. And anybody don't like it can come to my office and I'll release your ass right now. The screw job was already in the makings. He had to find somebody that would do it. The conversation I had with Vince where, where we really had the big heart-to-heart -heart was the following Wednesday in Stanford, and I told him what I thought. Vince's reaction to it was, if you had known, then you would have known. You would never be able to say that you didn't know. Shawn Michaels risked everything for you, for this company. So before you condemn Shawn Michaels, understand what he did for you and your family. There were a lot of what-if scenarios discussed the night before, and I think that everybody believed that at the end of the day, Vince was going to be able to convince Brett to drop the championship. That didn't happen, so Vince asked uh, Jerry Briscoe to let Sean know it was a spot in the match uh, that Sean would get him in the in the sharpshooter, the ring the bell. <laughs> of all people, Bret Hart, who was raised in the wrestling business, whose father was a wrestler, who went through the code, he's the one that exposed the business. We're talking with Bret Hart, the hitman today. How are you? It was very important to me after 14 years of uh, probably the most dedicated, loyal, hardworking service that you could ever get out of a professional wrestler by giving this man everything you could ever ask for. And I made it very, very clear that my character was not in any way, shape, or form going to be humiliated. Brett was telling any and everybody that he could. He didn't lose. He was screwed. And it was something that Vince felt it was important to address on Monday Night Raw. Did you or did you not? Screw Bret Hart. There's a time-honored tradition in the wrestling business that when someone is leaving, that they show the right amount of respect. And the people are like, no, we don't want to like the rich billionaire boss. We liked Bret Hart. He was our hero. Bret Hart didn't want to honor that tradition. Vince was 
really giving Bret Hart all kinds of shit for not honoring the time-honored tradition of doing the right thing on the way out on TV. This didn't happen ever before. Vince in this interview just came across very cold, calculated, and very, very heelish. I truly believe that Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart. And you can look in the mirror and know that. Rather than sweep this incident under the rug, Vince capitalizes on it by transforming this real-life incident into a storyline where he reinvents himself as an evil, conniving mastermind. When I debuted, the fans didn't know that Vince was the owner. He was an announcer. And then once the word got out that he actually owns the company, he's the power behind the throne, this and that, Vince ran with it. Mr. McMahon is one of the greatest heel characters of all time, yes. I mean, you've heard arenas full of people chant, asshole, asshole. If they had done it right, everybody prospered. Shawn Michaels became the WWF champion off a big win. Vince McMahon became the catalyst to the evil empire of Mr. McMahon. And they handed the hottest wrestler in the world, Bret Hart, to WCW, and they dropped that ball.